In this presentation, let's understand the AES encryption and decryption process. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one. Recall the AES structure what we have seen in the last lecture and also we will recall the relationship between the key size and the number of rounds which is very much important as far as AES is concerned. Outcome number two, we will understand the AES encryption and decryption process and outcome number three, we will know the various transformations in AES encryption and decryption process. Before understanding the AES encryption and decryption, let's quickly run through the AES structure what we have seen in the last presentation. Here is the AES structure. So the input playing text which is of 128 bits, which is actually stored in the input state array which is of 16 bytes. 16 bytes means 128 bits. So the 128 bit input is stored in the input state array. Then it is given to the initial transformation first. So this initial transformation is actually requiring a round key which is round 0 key. Please make a note of this now. If you understand this part then it will be easy to correlate in the next diagram what we are going to see shortly. So after the input state array is transformed using this initial transformation, the result is now stored in the state array and this is actually given to round 1 where this round 1 is taking 4 transformations then it is given to round 2 it is going to take 4 transformations and it goes on then it goes to round n minus 1 which is also having 4 transformations and that result is given to round n which contains only 3 transformations and whatever we get from the round n transformation is going to be stored in the final state array and this final state array is going to contain 16 bytes of information which is 128 bits. For n rounds we need n round keys. Also we need one more round key which is for the initial transformation. So round 0 key is used for initial transformation and round 1 to round n transformations need round 1 to round n round keys. And all these keys are actually scheduled by the key scheduling algorithm which is going to take the key which is of m bytes where this m and n the number of rounds has a relationship so m is the key size which can be 128 or 192 or 256 and n can be 10 or 12 or 14 as per the key size so if the key size is 128 number of rounds is 10 192 it is 12 and 256 it is 14 so what we need to understand in this diagram is that the round key for every round we are using a 16 byte round key 16 bytes means obviously 128 bits so this key scheduling algorithm may take input of 128 or 192 or 256 but all the round keys will be of constant size which is of 128 bits in nature. And based on the key size the number of rounds are going to be varying. Always remember the last round will be having only 3 transformations whereas the remaining rounds will be having 4 transformations in each round. Now what is happening inside every round? So we can see that there is an initial transformation which is requiring a round key and also round 1 which is having 4 transformations which is also requiring a round key. Now let's turn our attention towards what is happening inside every round and inside this initial transformation. So that we will understand how this plain text is converted into ciphertext and also the reverse how the ciphertext is converted back to plain text. This is what exactly the AES encryption and decryption. Let's dive into the AES encryption and decryption and let me show the diagram for this now. So we can understand that in the previous diagram the input the plain text which is of 16 bytes or 128 bits is actually converted into cipher text which is of 16 bytes or 128 bits. It can be any AES variation AES 128 or AES 192 or AES 256 but the input size and the output size remain the same which is of 128 bits in nature. Also the plain text is actually stored in the initial state array and that value is given to initial transformation. Can you see here in the previous diagram the input is actually going to initial transformation which is taking a key. So here also the plain text is actually going to an initial transformation but that initial transformation is not a round 1 or round 2 transformation. Before entering into the round there is an initial transformation where in that initial transformation we are just adding the round key. So the plain text 128 bits are taken and we know the key size right. So this is a word which is generated by the key scheduling algorithm. As I already mentioned the key scheduling algorithm is going to generate the sub keys or round keys that are required for every round including the initial transformation. The key scheduling algorithm first generates the key that is required for the initial transformation that is adding the round key to the plain text. 
So the words 0 to 3 are generated by the key scheduling algorithm. A word means it is of 32 bits. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So 4 words it is generating. 4 words means 4 into 32 which is 128 bit key. It is generated by the key scheduling algorithm for the initial transformation. Then what is happening here? A simple XOR operation is carried out. So the plain text 128 bits or 16 bytes is added with the 128 bit key. This key is the round key for the initial transformation which is referred as round 0 key. Once the XOR operation is performed, then it is entering into round 1. Let me just show the previous diagram. So once the initial transformation is done, what is happening here? A simple XOR operation, just the plain text is added with the round key. A simple XOR operation. Then that result is stored in the array which is entering into round 1 which is having 4 transformations. Now the output of this initial transformation is given to round 1 where in round 1 we have 4 transformation, substitute bytes, shift rows, mix columns and add round key. So these are the 4 transformations that are happening in round 1. I will explain in the next presentation about these various transformations that are used in every round. The transformations are substitute bytes or simply sub bytes, shift rows, mix columns and add round key. Now if you see here what is the key size in this example I am showing? 16 bytes. 16 bytes means 128 bits. So I am talking about AES 128. AES 128 means how many rounds it's going to take. As per the table it's going to take 10 rounds. So 9 rounds will be with 4 transformations. Can you see here? Round 1 to round 9. I mean round 1, round 2, round 3 up to round 9. There will be 4 transformation sub bytes, shift rows, mix columns and add round key. Similarly, can you see here round 9 is also having sub bytes, shift rows, mix columns and add round key. And the last round will be with only 3 transformations. Can you see here the last round, the 10th round is having only 3 transformations, sub bytes, shift rows, add round key. Can you figure out what transformation is missing in round 10 or the last round? It's the mix column that is missing in the last round. Always remember for n-1 rounds we need to perform 4 transformations and for the nth round we are going to perform only 3 transformations where we are going to omit the mix column transformation. So if you proceed like this the plain text is actually converted into the cipher text. Now let's focus on how key scheduling is happening. We will see about the details of the key scheduling in a separate lecture. But for now, we know that there is a key scheduling algorithm which is going to expand the keys by taking the input key size. This input key size may be 128 bits or 192 bits or 256 bits. If the key size is 128 bits, then we are talking about AES 128 which takes 10 rounds. If the key size is 192 bits or 24 bytes, then we are talking about AES 192 which takes 12 rounds. And the final version is AES 256. This AES 256 takes 14 rounds of operations. Always remember, we are going to process all the rounds, but n-1 rounds with 4 transformations and the nth round with 3 transformations. So this key scheduling algorithm gives the words 0 to 3 for initial transformation which is performed with the add round key operation. Then for round 1 we need key, right? So once 0 to 3 are expanded by the key scheduling algorithm, the key scheduling algorithm expands the key so that it can generate the words from 4 to 7. The words 4 to 7 which is the round key for round 1 which is given to round 1 and words from 8 to 11 is given to round 2 and likewise the keys from 36 to 39 is given to round 9. And finally we have one more round with 3 transformation which is the last round. This last round takes the words from 40 to 43. And this is the key that is used for round 10 and whatever the data that is coming out after performing the add round key operation in 10th round, that's exactly the cipher text. Now just tell me how many words are here? For this input key size, which is 16 bytes or 128 bits, there are 44 words that are expanded by the key scheduling algorithm. So from 0 to 43, 44 words. 44 words means 44 32 bits data. So all these are expanded by the key scheduling algorithm. So this side is the encryption portion and this side is the decryption portion. Can you see here, the decryption takes the cipher text as the input and then it generates the plain text back. So this is a perfect example for AES 128 because the key size is 16 bytes or 128 bits. 
Now the words that are expanded is also depending on the key size. Why? Because the number of rounds are going to be extended. If the key size is 16 bytes or 128 bits, then it's going to take only 10 rounds. For 10 rounds, only 44 words are required. If the key size is 192 bits or 24 bytes, then we need to have 12 rounds. So for 12 rounds, we need to have 8 more words additionally, right? So 52 words are actually required. So 52 words are actually required for AES-192 and for AES-256, then we need to have 60 words because it's going to contain 14 rounds. And coming to the decryption, as I already mentioned, it's going to take the ciphertext as the input and it's going to generate the plain text as the output. In the encryption, what we did, the plain text is initially added with the round key, then n rounds are performed, then we got the ciphertext. Now the ciphertext is actually given to the decryption algorithm where this ciphertext is actually given to the round key. In encryption, we first did the initial transformation which is adding the round key. In decryption, we are just adding the round key first. Then it is given to round 1, round 2, up to round 10. And what is the difference? The only difference is whatever key we used for round 10, that is words 40 to 43 we used for round 10, that is the key that is used for the initial transformation in the decryption part. So the initial reverse transformation in the decryption part is taking words 40 to 43 as the round key. Then round 1 takes the key 36 to 39 which was actually used for the encryption in round 9. And round 9 takes the key, the words from 4 to 7, where this round key was actually used by round 1. And for the 10th round, whatever we used for the initial round in the encryption, that word is used as the key. So the 10th round of decryption takes the round key, which was actually the round key during the initial transformation. Also, please be noted that the final round in both the encryption and the decryption has only three transformations. See, in the encryption, the 10th round or 12th round or 14th round will have only three transformations, whereas in the decryption, the same 10th or 12th or 14th round will have the same three transformations. So, we cannot exactly say that the decryption is quite opposite to the encryption because it depends on the structure of the AES. I hope the encryption and decryption are clear to you. Before we step out, let's revisit what are all the four transformations we did. So from this we have come to know that there are four transformations in the rounds. One is the substitute bytes, shift rows, mix columns and add round key. Let's elaborate on this in the next presentation. And that's it guys, we recalled the AEA structure and the relationship between the key size and the number of rounds. We also have understood the AES encryption and decryption process. And we also have seen various transformations in AES encryption and decryption process. I mean in every round what are all the various transformations. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.